try and... Uh, Don, when did you develop an interest in International Harvester tractors? Back in 87. I uh, got hurt and I had to have something to do, so I just started restoring tractors. And why the red ones? Well, the first one I ever drove was an International H, so I just kept it on going. How old were you then? 10 or 11, probably, maybe 9, I don't know, somewhere in there. Once you develop a little affinity to uh, a certain color of paint, it kind of stays with you, doesn't it? it just like your blood, it's going to be red, you know, so I, I had to continue it on. Yeah. We're standing next to a 600D. Tell us about this tractor. What's unique about it? Well, unique because there was only 1,485 of them made. I heard uh, that this one was uh, available at Hersher, Illinois, an IH dealer. And I went and purchased it and found out that it was serial number 501 being the first one made. So I got to say that this is very much the favorite one in the collection. Why did they start with serial numbers 501? That is a good question. Some of them started at 501, some at 10,000, some at 50,000. So that's as far as why I, that's the best I can say is I, I just know that they did, you know. What kind of condition was this tractor in when you got it? Well, she sat from 67 to 91, and the motor was stuck. The, gas, the fuel cap was off of it, and the, my, the mice and the rats made a pretty good nest inside. Straight, he was a good straight tractor, but I sandblasted her down and primed and painted her, and other than being dusty right now, I think she's a pretty good looker. When somebody uses that term straight, what do they mean? Well. No big dents and things in the grill and the hood and the back of the fenders and things like that where they usually get abused. So, but this one was real straight. Had it been shedded all that time? It had been in the shed. But they had parts and hay and straw stacked right up all the way to the top of it. And when I first walked in the shed and looked at it, all I could see was a steering wheel and the top of the two fender. <laughs> so. When you go to restore a tractor, what's the toughest part that you have to deal with? What consistently gives you problems? Finding parts? Some, some models finding parts. There's different models that it's hard. Tin work, very difficult to find decent tin work. The biggest problem is uh, if, if somebody was wanting me to do their project, is what degree of restoration that they want to do. So. It's just getting together and find out what they want and how much money they want to spend. There are varying levels of restoration. I guess. Yeah, just for one thing, you can go $24 a gallon on primer up to 86. So it just depends on what they want. Now there are people who manufacture parts, aren't there? Yeah, there's remanufactured parts on on some of the tractors and different things on different tractors. Yeah. Nobody, to my knowledge, has come out redoing fenders. But I think there will be somebody in the very near future. Tires can be a problem sometimes? Real, especially now after the strike. Tires are on a big demand. And I tried about seven different uh, tire dealerships before I found the ones that we put on yours. So, uh, little tires, the front tires, no problem. It's the back tires. And it's real hard to find the 45 degree angle on the tread. So. 1997, they're supposed to be reproducing the old Firestone 45 degree tread in the 38 inch tire. So. Some interesting stories behind some of these tractors, I would imagine. There's a bunch of stories that everybody comes up, they got a story. Well, their dad had it, their uncle had it, their first one they drove, and one every once in a while is the first, first uh, tractor. They had, and they rolled over, and they wanted another one just like they used to have. So, yeah, it's interesting. Very nice people. A lot of nice people to meet. That's one thing you find about this hobby, isn't it? There, there are people who like to help out a little bit, like to lend a hand. Very interesting people. They, uh, they, they, they just like a big club, you know. They just want to help each other out, and if you need a part, and you're looking for a part, they'll come out and they'll help you if they know where they are or they'll help you look, make some phone calls and look for you. So. How do you think this particular show has gone? I'm, I'm very well satisfied with this show because of the variety. Uh, as a whole, as far as the total paint jobs and things that's on these tractors, I think it's excellent. 
I've been to quite a few shows, and percentage-wise, this has got to be the higher percentage on painted tractors. We're seeing more implements, too, it seems to me, Don. I mean, I, I was surprised with the number of implements that you find here, plows, for example. In the last five years, mainly in the last two, but five years ago, you'd see a few. In the last couple years, you're seeing more people get into the implements, and I think it's good. Being a relative newcomer to this, it's hard for me to gauge, but are you seeing an increase in interest in antique tractors? Oh, definitely, yes. The only sad thing about it is, is the quality of tractors that these antique tractor sales, the quality of tractors is way down. So the good ones are pretty well scarfed up. And you can notice it too in the used parts that they have at these sales. Even the quality of used parts is way down compared to even two years ago. So the good ones are getting grabbed up. When you find a good quality tractor, I presume it's bringing a little higher price. Oh yeah, the clean tractor, straight tractor, running if it isn't pumping oil out the exhaust. She's going to bring big money and it's doing nothing but increasing every year. Well, I have to ask you about my tractor a little bit. Did you run into any problems, any challenges on that? No, about the hardest part on that was getting that left wheel weight off of it. But other than that, she was a good straight tractor, good sound tractor, rear end, transmission, motor's good. Just like any of them that's got some age on it, you know, they got a little oil leak here and there. And she was definitely one of the better in the, in the top 95% bracket that I've seen. <laughs> I'll tell my dad, he'll appreciate he'll that. He'll like that. He, he took good care of it. He didn't abuse it. So, yeah, it was good. I wish it was all that good a shape that I had to restore. And to the world of antique farm tractors, this is the object of my affections. A 1953 Farmall Super H, manufactured, in fact, in the year in which I was born. They tell me that you can tell the difference between the 1953 and the 54 model by looking right here at the battery. On the 53, it's under the gas tank. On the 54 models, they put them under the seat. They made about 22,000 of those Farmall Super H's in that two-year period, 53 and 54. This one is model number 16,450. It was delivered to the Adams and Morrow International Harvester dealership in Princeton, Indiana, a dealership just about two blocks from where I was delivered in 1953. My father and his uncle with whom he farmed, Frank DeLay, took delivery of this tractor in December of 1954. And I spent a lot of time with it as a youth. In fact, it was on this tractor that I learned to drive at the age of nine. We used this tractor for tillage with a two-bottom plow and with a disc through the decade of the 50s and on into the 60s. We used it for planting. It pulled a four-row planter right on into the early 80s, as a matter of fact. I used a two-row cultivator with this tractor putting it on and taking it off on many different occasions by myself when I was a teenager, a strapping youth in southern Indiana. And at the same time, we used it to pull corn wagons. We'd use it with a sickle bar mower to mow off the roadside, and we would use it with a sprayer on our farm. Don Corey restored this tractor in his shop in Shenoa, Illinois, after I purchased it at my father's auction in April of 1995. There for a while, I didn't think about buying this tractor. I hate to think. What if I would have passed up that opportunity? As we drive these vintage tractors, there are many motivations for doing so. And some say, well, you're showing off. You know, that could be. Many of us are, in fact, proud. Proud of what we restored. Or proud of what a friend did for us in the restoration process. We want people to see us with this magnificent machine that someone designed so superbly and assembled so splendidly maybe a half century ago. And then there's the family connection. If this machine takes you back to your youth, if this is the tractor on which you spent your formative years, the tractor maybe that your uncle purchased, or the one that enabled your mother and father to feed you, clothe you, and maybe send you to college. Well, it may be hard to find the words to describe the affection. And believe me, other tractor owners will understand, no matter what color they cherish, if your eyes get a little bit misty recounting the story of this love affair, how it all began, how it may have been rekindled, 
and how you will never forget. Well, we're going to... Civil.